What's up YouTube world? Um, my name's Ryan. Don't get a chance to post a lot of videos, but uh, I do quite a bit of looking and research myself, so I thought I'd uh, contribute because I've got the ability to at this point. So I've got this WEN 11,000 watt generator. This is intended for a whole home backup system. Um, I selected this particular unit specifically because it's got a 50 amp output. Um, it actually doesn't have a true 50 amp output, and I want to clarify that for anybody that might be watching this. So it's got the 50 amp RV plug, but if you see on there main breakers, you're only 35 amps. And then if you come over to the, on, the 120 twist lock, that's a single 30 amp. And then of course your standard GFI 20s. This is a nice one. It actually gives you a real cigarette lighter, which is cool, instead of just one of those goofy 12-volt plugs. Um, <clears throat> it does have a meter. When it's running, it'll tell you the uh, output voltage and the output frequency, and it's got a, uh, a time odometer on it as well. Electric start. This is the dual fuel, and it's got the gas or propane option. The point of this video is to show how, I am made, how I've made this a tri-fuel unit. As you can see the regulator here right here this comes factory with the generator this is for your LP gas and they provide you with a whip regulator to plug into your standard bottles. That part's cool works fine. This is where I got creative. Now I've seen some guys put this together in other ways so I kind of took a collaboration of everything and basically made it my own because I liked what they did but I didn't like certain things so what we're gonna do get a little flashlight here sorry for the shakiness I'm no pro at this but I just wanted to show this off because it's really um, important I think and and to have this all in one spot might be helpful for somebody else so these are your standard Chinese motors, comes on most of these generators. This one's a 457cc model, which is a rough equivalent of like a 13 or 14 horsepower motor. So as you saw in the front of the generator, there's this big selector knob, which on the back side translates into this. The top hose is your hose out to the carburetor. And then the bottom hose is my new hose that I ran to my manifold. This is a selection switch system that I created so that you can pick either your propane or your natural gas. Everything you see here I picked up either Amazon Harbor Freight or Home Depot or Menards. So to get started, all of the tubing, the, ru the ru black rubber tubing you're seeing is 3 8 hose. So this fitting here is a quarter inch MIP to 3 8 barb and that comes up to this. These are all 3 8 valves. Pick these up at Menards. Home Depot's got them but you got to order them. These were actually sitting in the store so that's why I went there for them. Uh, 3 8 everything here. Another 3 8 to MIP to 3 8 barb. Same here and same over here. Now that part is pretty simple um, to get to the gas portion, the natural gas portion of this, I added this regulator. This was purchased off of eBay for somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 something bucks. There's a guy that sells a kit, or there's a company that sells a kit that includes this and a bunch of other parts. And that's if you're retrofitting a gasoline only version motor to natural. I bought this generator specific because it already had the carburetor that was set up for using air gas as a fuel. So that's also important to know if you're hunting for a generator. To get started, this is separate from this. These are two pieces that I had to purchase separately. Now the, the kit you find online has both, so pay attention to the pictures. Another thing I learned today, which I need to go play with, is this. This orifice right here has a set screw in it. Now, it had a silver cover that looked like it was permanent. 
But after a little digging on the interwebs, I figured out that that's just a cover that can be removed. Now, when I ran this originally, I ran it starting with propane, and then I switched it over to natural gas. This is a circuit setter, so you back it out, you get more gas to the motor. I have this backed out as far as it will go before it'll even just basically fall out of here. And it was still running a little rougher than with the propane. The propane smoothed out the motor quite a bit. And I had the luxury of having both fuels available and using both hands. I would um, close that one and open this one immediately. And the generator would just minorly, very minorly hiccup and continue running. So it was really a good way for me to hear the resonance of the motor and how it was running during operation. All of this is with no load, by the way. This is just running the, the motor. So today my plan is to test tune with the new port that I exposed and see if I can get this bad boy running just the same with the uh, propane as well as the natural gas. Once I do that, I'll put load on it, tune it some more, and we'll see what happens. But this has all been a fun project, and there's been lots of sources of information that I've had to go through to get to it, and that's why I wanted to show off this video. Um, the standoffs. This was a real important thing for me. There was a guy that did the same thing. He had the same sort of manifold on here, but his was all hanging on there, real hokey. I wanted mine to be real solid. So I found these neat standoff clamps for black iron. They're designed to be pipe hangers, actually and um, they're tapped on the back side with a, uh, I think it's a 3 8 thread size bolt. And so I picked up some galvanized hardware and basically just drilled some holes and then cut the bolt just the right size so that I could screw it down in here. And that's what holds, this thing is solid, this ain't moving. Same thing with this, through bolts, through the frame, and uh, all galvanized hardware ended up using Loctite on everything as well because it's a generator. It's going to vibrate. So I didn't want none of this stuff backing out if I could help it. One thing I'm going to upgrade also is this nozzle apparatus. You know, this whole snout. I want to go pick up a three-quarter inch Street 90 and so that it'll go down and then uh, put the rest of this on. The uh, uh, <clears throat> input uh, orifice is three-quarters. This is, I want to say, a 7 sixteenths, which is why it requires a, uh, you know, a special um, tap there. And all that's actually printed, embossed on there. This model of valve is the C039122, made by Sentry. This was purchased by Sentry Fuel Products. They sell on Amazon. That's how I got it. There is a lot of the same valves, potentially with the same names and numbers on it, sold by different people. So just know all that. They're pretty much the same damn thing. Whether you can find it for 10 bucks cheaper from one guy to the other, that's on, um, you know, good for you. Um, like I said, if you see just a silver cover right here, no way looking like it can come off. I'm telling you, it comes off. I had to drill a hole in the middle of it, and then I took a screwdriver like an awl, and I popped it right out. And then there you go. Lo and behold, there's my set. Now that screw that you see, you got to take that all the way out. It's just a cap. And then behind it is another screw that looks identical to it. That is your actual setter. So you got to have this thing running, and then you got to have this outer screw gone, you know, the cap screw gone. And then you can mess around with the setting. And that's what I plan to do later today. Alright guys, hope this was informative. Hope this might spark some ideas for people in the future. And uh, good luck with your projects.